Walt Disney was a man who loved to play jokes on his colleagues. Once when they were working on a cartoon about a mouse, he thought of a prank. He brought a big live mouse into the studio where everybody was working. Soon after, the little creature slipped out of his hand, got loose and ran around the room. It got under people's clothes, ran up their hair, and finally after much effort, they caught the mouse. And suffice it to say, the little mischievous mouse inspired one of the most famous cartoon creatures we all know, Mickey Mouse. Hi there, you're listening to What's New Today. This is a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our world. This is Sangeeta, your host from India. As Disney Studios celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2023, we're publishing a three-part podcast series. This is part two of this series. In part one, we spoke about stories from the early years of Disney. If you haven't heard it, I highly recommend you listen to that after you finish listening to this episode. In this part, we speak about some of the interesting characters from recent Disney movies and how these famous stories have evolved. And joining me to talk about this in this episode is... Hi, my name is Adanya Harish. I study in 6th grade in Bansanga Sissam Shetty International School and Junior College. I am 12 years old. I love reading, writing poems, uh, stories, journaling, art, all of that. I love it. On that note about how people love storytelling, let's launch into our episode about one of the greatest storytellers of the 20th century, Walt Disney. I think for a lot of people, he stands for many different things. He's a creative animator. He's somebody, he's an entrepreneur. He's a a risk taker. He's so many different things. To start off today's episode, I thought we'd start with a tiny little quiz about Disney characters. Yeah, so I'll give you a few hints and see if you can guess who this character is. Shall we try? Yes. The first question, identify this character. I've been looking out of a window for 18 years and dreaming about what I might feel like when those lights rise in the sky. Tangle, Rapunzel. Yes. Awesome. Here's the second question. Hakuna Matata, no worries. This is a famous line said by whom? Pumba and Timon. Yeah, in which movie? The Lion King. And the last question in this quiz. Uh, Who's this? In the Cave of Wonders, this person had been trapped for 10,000 years. The genie from Aladdin. Yup, he's a genie who has lived there for 10,000 years. You know, when he tells Aladdin that I've been trapped for 10,000 years, and he, you know, emerges out of that lamp. You know what Aladdin first says? No, I don't remember. Do you have a crick in the neck? You must have bent for such a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found that line absolutely hilarious. On that note, we are trying to track the journey of how the Disney Studios has evolved in the last 50 years. So this year is the 100th year of Disney. So imagine this story where Elsa is the villain of the story and she has spiky blue hair and a team of angry snow monsters who will do her bidding and Olaf is the leader, the big angry henchman. And Elsa then transforms into this evil snow queen In the end, there's a fight between the good and evil and Elsa is forced to give up her powers. How different is this from the real story of Frozen? Extremely different. But it is reminiscent to something else. Um, There's actually a fairy tale. It's a very old one. It's about the Snow Queen. 
who is who which follows this plot exactly and it's what inspired frozen in the first place there's a tiny story about why disney studios changed the entire plot line of even frozen 1 so this original fairy tale is what they were actually going to create and make into frozen 1 movie and elsa was going to be the villain and the evil snow queen <clears throat> and there was going to be one song in the movie the song at which point she has to transform into the evil snow queen and uh, so when they gave this song to a song writer the lyricist and composer duo they are called kristen anderson lopez and robert lopez they gave it to them and said this is the story and you please write this song for us when kristen lopez and uh, robert lopez were thinking about this whole story line they wanted to put themselves in elsa's shoes so they thought about a girl who has trapped all her powers and kept it suppressed inside her right they they felt sympathy for her they did not think that this little girl is likely to you know turn evil so they felt this little girl deserves a lot more sympathy for who she is and there is potential for her to actually turn into a good person who will accept that these are my powers and let me put these powers to good use so then when they thought of this and they said okay i know what I, uh, elsa is someone who doesn't have to be ashamed of her powers do you think she should have been ashamed no not at all in the original stories that's how they kind of build her character and then they wrote the song let it go where they say okay you know let go of all the embarrassment that you might have and accept your powers for what it is and they send that song to the disney team when the disney team heard the song they loved it so much of course the song became a big hit among children like you and adults like me so the song changed the way the and uh, the disney storytellers thought of the story i didn't know that that was the cause for the change of thought music plays such an important role in all the disney movies right for walt disney music was a very very quintessential part of every movie that he made beginning with his very first feature film which is snow white so it actually won an oscar he actually got a customized one he got seven tiny golden uh, golden men uh, along with that honorary award to represent the seven dwarves in snow white wow i didn't know this interesting trivia we'll move to the next part of this discussion which is about how disney characters have changed i'll give you the names of some disney characters disney princesses to be specific and uh, tell me which adjective your would pop into your head when you think of these characters all right shall i start the first one is snow white soft naive those kind of things second one cinderella Will we feel sympathetic for her? She's elegant, forgiving, those kind of things. The next one, Mirabel. Bubbly, confident, strong. There are so many things that describe her, but she's very different from Snow White or Cinderella. And the last one, I don't know. Have you seen the movie Moana? I have. Okay, then how would you describe Moana? Free, strong-willed, stubborn. So if you had to take all of these four characters and group them separately, categorize them, which characters would you classify together and why? Mirabel and Moana, and then uh, Cinderella and so on, Snow White. Like the first princesses, Snow White, Cinderella, they all were like obedient, silent, uh, simply waiting for someone to save them, and then. Um, Mirabel and Moana fall into the more recent movies category which is like more confident more strong independent she's accomplishing goals on her own
the way you just described how these personalities of disney princesses specifically have changed in the first 50 years to the second 50 years is pretty stark right uh, some of them fight wars some of them try to end wars also so there are all kinds of uh, disney princesses there's one more aspect where the disney princesses have changed in the earlier days all of them were white princesses from europe but now we have extended uh, the different races the princesses of princesses are from for example tiana she is a black american pocahontas she is a uh, native in red indian a uh, native american um mirabel she is from she is hispanic she is from colombia there's raya from raya and the last dragon she is southeast asian so there are a lot of different races nowadays Whoa! Yep, absolutely correct. So, do you see more of yourself or people of your age? You know, children of your age. Do do you think they identify more with the Snow White Cinderella group, or do you think they identify more with the Moana Mirabel group? They definitely identify more with the the Moana Mirabel group. Like, um, my friends, they all uh follow. The, these these Disney movies, especially Raya and these kind of Asian princesses, I really want an Indian princess. Wow! Yeah. I love uh, Raya and the Last Dragon because she's a nation princess. It's much needed. So Disney Studios, if you're hearing this, this is what Ananya Harish and many of her friends would also like to see. We've got a ton. of fairy tales even based out of india so they don't have to sit and recreate stories there are a lot of amazing mythological characters or even other folk characters that we've read about so with that we come to the next interesting part of this episode which is the quiz time question 1 Which is the one song in Frozen One that changed the entire narrative or the way the story was originally conceived for the movie? Let it go. Second question: What is the one characteristic or personality trait that you think is different amongst the Disney princesses of the first fifty years versus the second fifty years? independence and the third and the last question name a disney princess who is of southeast asian origin and is a warrior princess raya awesome with that we come to an end uh, to this recording it was an absolute delight chatting with you ananya I hope you enjoyed this chat and this conversation as much as I did. I did. It was such a pleasure talking with you. So, um, if there's one episode that you've really enjoyed and would like to recommend to our listeners, what would that be? Uh, I like the episode on Christopher Slayton, how he created a Minecraft universe. Like, I love space and I love. Uh, Uni- the universe it was really interesting and i uh, and i looked up christopher slayton it was i i liked that episode i also liked the episode on that cyborg cockroaches that the japanese scientists made uh, and those hero rats that that detect where the mines are planted awesome so if any of our listeners would like to listen to these two episodes that ananya just recommended you can find links to them in the show notes below Stay tuned for part three of this podcast series, where you'll get to hear from an animator from California who creates many of the Disney movies we all love. And before you leave, we're looking forward to seeing more of you. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this. It's a sure-shot way of building our audience base. Please help us, and thanks for listening. <laughs>